We're joined in the studio now by former Home Office Minister Norman Baker. Norman, good morning. Before good morning we do anything, you. you failed me, haven't you? Have I? Where's your red box you promised to bring in? I didn't promise to bring it in. I mentioned it was difficult to bring it on public transport. Oh, yes, it might. I, I want, want to see to... his red box. Well, <laughs> then enough of that for later. Norman, um, what do you make... What do you think, sorry, will be announced later on in Labour's local election campaign? Oh, lots of warm words, uh, promises to devolve more power, uh, support for local areas. It wouldn't mean very much unless there's money attached to it, because the reality is that 2015 local councils have been on the floor and they've got no cash. Look at the state of the potholes. When I was in France and Germany, by the way, there was no potholes anywhere over there in the last month or so. Potholes everywhere. Um, youth centres closing by the day, libraries being shut. Unless there's going to be more money from Labour or a recast of how local council taxes are formed, it won't make a slight, slight bit of difference. I'm quite interested in these local elections for, for one, well, two reasons, actually. One is <clears throat> whether it's a barometer to how hacked off people really are with politics in general. Yeah. Also, there's that whole big argument, which I fervently believe in, you might not, Nick might not, that, that actually we're, we're stuck between the devil and the deep blue sea with local councils. Either you give them complete autonomy and power and the, the central government is not going to bail you out if you get it wrong. There are many councils, Labour and Tory, I should make this point, who are skint across the country through yes. complete man, bad man man management or it, it, it it's it's rode back upon my, my question about where they are today and what they're saying is i can't get over the fact that 10 days ago we had potentially the first ever female chancellor in this country saying thatcher today we've got keir starmer in that red wall area quoting boris johnson i mean you look back four years I mean, talk about change, Norm. It's ridiculous. It is it? ridiculous. And what the Labour Party is doing, or at least what Keir Starmer is trying to do, uh, is to present himself as, a, as an acceptable Conservative. That's what he's doing. He's trying to say that this lot are out of control, but we'll carry on with our policies, but deliver them more effectively. That's essentially the message is he's giving. Is there a danger trying to be all things to all people? Of course there is. And actually, the danger is if they are going to just carry on with that very much change and inherit the Conservative spending plans, then what's actually going to be the difference between this lot and the next lot? If, however, they're going to have a radical policy they haven't told about, then that's dishonest because it won't be in the manifesto. So they've got to actually come clean on what they want to do. Mm. Are they going to focus... I'm kind of obsessed with this idea. Are they going to focus on big national issues, even though it's a local election campaign? Or is it wiser to go in with saying, mm. we're going to collect your bins on time, <clears throat> we're going to fill in those hot potholes? Are they going to be much smaller, localised campaign promises? I think they're going to talk about devolution from the centre and right. how local authorities need to be reinvigorated and all that sort of vague language, which I agree with, but unless it's underpinned by money... It won't mean anything. That's the basic. That's the bottom line. Local councils. They're not. Yes, Jeremy. There are some which have been mismanaged, yeah. like Birmingham. Yeah. But there are other ones which have been not mismanaged, which are on the on no, the no. bread line too. Listen, I completely agree. Um, <clears throat> my my point, and I really want to pick you up on it because I think you're absolutely right. And this is in no way me criticising anybody. There ain't no money left, right? No. It, we are. Whether it's the pandemic, mismanagement, our social services, well, our social things in society are struggling. Our military is not at all what it should be. We have the immigration issue. We've got what's happening in the Middle East. We're happening in Ukraine. We're supposed to give money here, there and everywhere. Well, I don't hear from Labour. I heard non dom for six months. That was three billion. Mm. Where We've heard about the rowback on the green thing for 20... Where's the money coming from, Norman? Because the reality is, once you get there, Starmer, it's a very different ball game. Where's the money coming from, Labour, for all these promises? Yes, well, we don't know the answer to that yeah. because um, I think they're going to pledge themselves to continue Tory spending plans as Blair did in 97. Uh, but of course, in 97. To get they... elected. Yeah. And then the cracks begin to show. Well, the economy was much stronger in 97, yeah. so Blair and Brown inherited quite a good position. Um, Starmer and Rayner will not inherit that. Do you think that they can come up, or rather, different question, do you think they will come up between now and the election with. With, with solid looking policies, or do you think their whole game plan is there is such chaos we can just walk along and take it easy and walk into Downing Street? And at that point, the British mm. public will realise the reality of. of, of well, this they, new they may well do. I mean, look what's been happening in the last six months as they've rolled back from every single policy near enough they've had the 28 billion for uh, the Green Deal and so on, the bankers' bonuses. They've all gone. There's not much left, very much. Uh, what they are talking about is pretty minuscule. You talked about water a moment ago, and uh, one of your uh, viewers, Joshua, was saying, let's renationalise the water industry. That's actually quite a popular policy. Uh, uh, it's, the water industry is out of control. Uh, why don't they say that? Because they're too, they're too fit, to use a Scottish word, they're too scared to do that. But do um, you not think... Sorry, Nick, do you not think the British public, right, are, 
are more aware. Dave, can you turn your thing off? You're talking in my ear. Sorry, people at home. Still made in. Do yeah. you? Is this a, a Labour Party that you recognise? It's certainly not the yeah, Labour Party. No, that I, was I don't power. recognise it. It's not. Certainly, it's a long way from from Corbyn, obviously. Sure. Hmm. But it's a long way from Blair, actually, because Blair and Brown in '96, before the '97 election, had a lot of good ideas. They talked about. Um, uh, you know, minimum wage and so on. They were quite radical ideas. And they put those before the British public and they were elected on those ideas. There was a positive agenda. I don't see a positive agenda from Starmer. I see lots of warm words and nothing much underneath them. And I think, I think that's the really interesting thing. I think it's a done deal. I think it smacks of huge incompetence on the Tory front, which is what I've been really honest yes. to you about, and said they really messed up the most ridiculously brilliant position through complete incompetence and chaos. I still don't know what Keir Starmer's going to bring. And I do say to people, and I understand people will vote and that's fine, you might be quite surprised in two years' time um, about how it isn't all picture-perfect and it hasn't all been paid for and we're all absolutely... Because it's not like that. No, they're going to come into power. I think they will win the election. The only other possibility is a hung parliament, but the Tories are going to lose the election. That's very clear. And when they get in there, uh, they'll suddenly turn around and say, as uh, they did in 2010, actually, the other way around, oh, there's no money left. Uh, and the, the books are much worse than we thought. We can't do very much. And the Labour backbenchers who are elected will say, well, hang on, we're not going to stand here and do nothing and have Tory policies. We want to do something else. So he's actually building up a problem with his own party, I think, in terms of the loyalty of his own backbenchers, who are being very quiet at the moment. But I know from talk talking to them, you know, they've got their own agenda, which is about far more radical policies than Keir Starmer was talking about. I think about. it's a really, really good point, Norman, I do. I think the difference between now... And 18 months down the line is going to be, well, we talk quite rightly about everybody yeah. attacking Sunak. You wait till the left wing side of the Labour Party. He's painting himself statesman like, yeah. Yeah. almost Tory esque. They're not going to sit there for five years and keep No, going. they're not, no. And the bigger the majority there is, uh, the more difficulty he will have because they think, well, we can vote against this because the Labour Party will win the vote anyway. Fascinating. Thanks, well, thank you so much to former Home Office Minister Norman Baker for joining us in the studio.